Now in this session we are going to start with the dielectrics in material science. What are dielectric materials? Dielectric materials are the materials which do not conduct electricity but get polarized when kept in the electric field. For example, glass, ceramics, polymers, paper are few examples of dielectrics. Before we start with the dielectrics, we need to see few definitions. We start with a dipole. What is a dipole? Two equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance constitutes a dipole. Polarization. The separation of effective centers of positive and negative charges in a substance by the application of electric field is known as polarization. So what exactly dipole means? When there are two equal and opposite charges are separated by a small distance then it is called as a dipole. Polarization. That means you can see in the diagram the centers of positive and negative charges are in a substance get separated by the application of electric field. This phenomena is called as a polarization. What is polarization? Polarization P is nothing but dipole moment per unit volume that is epsilon naught into E into epsilon R minus 1 that is equal to N A into E I. We will see these terms terminology. Now, if you look at the diagram here towards the left side, it is atoms in a dielectric in the absence of electric field. When there is no electric field, the centers of positive charges and the negative charges are randomly distributed. But if you see the right hand side figure, if, that is, if such material is placed in a electric field, in the presence of electric field, you can see there is a separation of positive charges and the negative charges. This separation of effective centers of positive and negative charges in a substance by the application of electric field is known as polarization. Now, now we have seen the dielectrics. Now we see the types of dielectrics. Non-polar dielectrics and polar dielectrics. Now what are non-polar dielectrics? The centers of both positive as well as negative charges coincide. These are the materials which do not possess a permanent dipole moment. They get polarized only in the presence of external electric field. All those molecules which belong to this category are symmetric in nature. That means, so what is non-polar dielectric says is both the centers of positive as well as negative charges coincide. There are materials which do not possess permanent dipole moment. We have seen the polarization when placed in an electric field, they get displaced and they get polarized. Such type of materials are called non-polar dielectrics. That means they do not have a permanent dipole moment. Examples are oxygen, nitrogen, helium and neon. These are having symmetric in nature. Now we will see what are non-polar dielectrics. This is what we have seen in the polar dielectrics. Now we will see the polar dielectrics. The centers of both positive and negative charges don't coincide with each other. This possesses a permanent dipole moment because the, the centers of positive and centers of negative charges do not coincide. So this constitute a dipole thereby they have a permanent dipole moment. They are permanently polarized in nature. The reason behind this is their shape. They all are having an asymmetric shape. For example, water, KCl and NH3 are the examples of polar dielectrics. Now we will see the expression for static dielectric constant. Consider a parallel plate capacitor of area A, charge density sigma and a total charge Q. From Gauss law, electric intensity between the plates is E is equal to sigma by epsilon r into epsilon naught. Now, what is the potential difference? We know that there is a potential difference V is equal to E into D that is sigma by epsilon naught into epsilon r into 
d. Substituting the value of e from the above equation into this equation, you are getting v is equal to sigma by epsilon r into epsilon naught into d. Now we see the cases in the absence of dielectric capacitance without dielectric c is equal to q by v. We know the definition of capacitance is q by v that is equal to sigma a by sigma d into epsilon naught is equal to epsilon naught into a by d. That means capacitance of a capacitor without the dielectric is epsilon naught into a by d. A is the area of cross section and small d is the distance of separation between the two plates. Now we see the second case in the presence of dielectric. Now see capacitance in the presence of dielectric is given by epsilon naught epsilon r into a by d. So if you compare both the equations capacitance of a capacitor is increased by epsilon r times when compared to capacitance without a dielectric. So we take this ratio as static dielectric constant epsilon r is equal to c with dielectric divided, divided by c without dielectric. Now dielectric constant or relative permittivity epsilon r is defined as a ratio of capacitance of a capacitor with a dielectric as a medium cm to the capacitance of the same capacitor with air as medium ca. Here cm is a capacitance in the medium and ca is the capacitor in air. Now relative permittivity is epsilon r is equal to cm by ca where epsilon r describes the ability of a dielectric material to store the charges. The permittivity of a medium is given by epsilon naught into epsilon r. Epsilon naught value is given as 8.854 into 10 to the power of minus 12 f by m that is called permittivity of free space. So for numericals we will be using this value. Now electric dipole is defined as two equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance. Positive charge, negative charge separated by a distance is called as an electric dipole. Dipole moment is the product of charge and the separation distance. That is mu is a dipole moment. It is a product of charge and separation between the distance that is mu is equal to QL. Now we see few definitions which is nothing but Dielectric polarizability, it is, it is denoted by alpha. Alpha is defined as induced dipole moment of an atom per unit electric field intensity. So what is alpha? Alpha is dielectric polarizability. It is nothing but the induced dipole moment of atom per unit electric field intensity. That is alpha is equal to mu by E. That is equal to capital P by E. N e where n is the number of dipoles per unit volume. Next we go with the polarization capital P it is defined as electric dipole moment per unit volume. P is defined as electric dipole moment per unit volume. The same sentence we have converted into the ratio form P is equal to electric dipole moment per unit volume which is nothing but mu by V. So the units are coulomb per meter square. So P is equal to alpha E by B. Therefore mu is equal to alpha into E. What is alpha? Dielectric polarizability and E is the electric field intensity. So from this we say that P is equal to N alpha E where N is the number of dipoles per unit volume and also P is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r minus 1 into E. So from this we can say that electric susceptibility psi it is denoted by psi electric susceptibility is denoted by P by epsilon naught into E that is equal to epsilon r minus 1. So these are all here everything is interrelated. So we are finding the electric susceptibility it is denoted by psi which is P by epsilon naught into E. We already know the values of P. Substitute that P value here 
and you will be getting the value as p by epsilon naught is equal to epsilon r minus 1. So, this is called as electric susceptibility. Thank you.